in this video I'm going to go deeper into what's happening when we have a kickback from a coil. So in this case over here, this is the source coil that will give us the kickback. It is uh, connected over here to the positive of this power supply. Then after the coil we are going to the MOSFET and from the MOSFET to the GND connection. Now in the GND connection that you see walking over there, I have two current measurements because I want to compare the difference between the tick box uh, RF current probe and this uh, current probe that can only go to 1 megahertz. And then we are going back to the power supply. Then over here we have the single generator that is giving signal to the gate driver and the gate driver is then controlling the MOSFET. This battery in the back is for the gate driver, uh, the power supply. What we now see on the screen is, uh, and I will start the circuit. So now the circuit is running and you can see that we are using 0 0.03 watts and we are now at a frequency of 400 hertz and we have a duty cycle of 2%. So what we see on the scope is over here the yellow trace is the kickback of the coil that we are measuring over here between that coil and the GND connection. And then we have the two current measurements. So the blue trace is from the RF current probe, that's that one, and the purple trace is of that current probe over there. So you see that both um, are giving approximately the same, except for when there is a heavy change, the RF current probe can follow it better. Now the reason why I wanted to uh, compare with this one is because this one can also do DC current. So um, I'm, I want to be sure that I'm not left leaving out something uh, from current draw that doesn't see by this uh, type of current measurement. Now, when we look at the spike of the kickback, we see that we have 745 volts. It's uh, switching between 767 and 745. Now, when I go to a higher frequency of uh, 1 kilohertz, we can see that the amplitude did go down, but also we can see that the current that we are delivering for creating that magnetic field over here is less in time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to increase the current, uh, the duty cycle. So now we have in time the same length of pulse. And we can see that we are back to the 745, 774, uh, 767 volts. But we are now drawing 0.1 watts, and that is because we have more pulses during the, the one second that we are uh, measuring for the power. So when I go to a higher frequency of 1.5 kilohertz, Again, we see that the spike did go down, but the, also the time that we are delivering current to that coil. So I'm going to change the duty cycle again. And now I'm going to change it to around 8%. So that we again have the same uh, time period that we are delivering current to that uh, coil. And again, we can see that we are now at 776, 788. So we are a little bit higher, but we must also look over here. So when I do the fine tuning with the duty cycle. So uh, when we are now at around 7.6%, um, then we are at the same. And we can see over here that we have that same 767 uh, volts. So whatever we do with our circuits, we need to have uh, the time for the magnetic field to build up uh, and that will deliver the voltage of the spike. But if we compare different frequencies, we must also look at the duty cycle so that the time that we are delivering current to that coil is the same. And then we can see that when we have the same current flowing in that coil, we have the same uh, kickback on the output over here. So in this case, um, what you see over here is the 
a series impedance to create that higher voltage. And I also have added uh, capacitors over there, uh, 180 picofarad, three in total. Uh, so what happens when we place those cap small capacitors? So without, the spike is much higher, but it's mu much smaller in duration of time. And when you place those capacitors, the amplitude will go down, but the time will go uh, higher. And therefore, uh, it's better to see over here that the spike is a little bit wider so that you can see it on the scope what is happening. But the most important thing is that for each frequency we can have the same kickback if we just uh, control the duty cycle that we have the same uh, length of time that we put in the current to the coil. Um, I also tried this without that capacitor in series over here and that is just the same. Uh, on the only difference is that the amplitude is lower when this capacitor is not there. When you make a, a setup like this and you don't use a battery uh, as, as the, the um, in between the positive of the, uh, of the power supply and your negative uh, ground circuit, um, you must be careful because the capacitor takes a charge. So when I now switch off the circuit, so it is switched off, then I have two places where I have voltage. I have one over here as you can see on the scope, but also over this, and this one is higher, because that is also coming from that capacitor. So when you make a setup like this, always discharge your current bef before you do anything uh, on work on there, because you get shocked. So only experiment on this when you know what you're doing, and of course that your MOSFET is high enough uh, to hand uh, the kick, the um, the, the voltage that the MOSFET can handle is high enough so that it doesn't break down on the higher voltage that we are working over here. Especially when you are first starting and you don't know exact what amplitude you will get, it will be dangerous to blow up uh, the MOSFET. This MOSFET is one of uh, 2 kV. So thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next video.